In this JavaScript programming lesson, you can learn to write rotation animations from scratch using just a few lines of very simple code. We'll be using JavaScript to animate the CSS transform property and apply rotation to it. One could also use pure CSS3 to do this by using keyframe animations, but there are problems that arise when you wish to change the speed or animation features while the animation is running if the user happens to interact with that animation or that element with their mouse. Perhaps if they hover their mouse over it or if they click it, you might want to be able to change animation speeds very seamlessly and other things like that. So that's why I'm going to demonstrate it using JavaScript even though we could use CSS keyframes animation. Before we discuss the code, let's take a look at the finished product. Okay, this is my HTML image element. It's named cog1.png. I put a little status down here that shows within an HTML H2 element that shows the exact degrees taking place as the animation runs. So you can see it goes from 0 to 360 degrees and you can spin any HTML elements that you like. Here I'll quickly change the code and I'll spin this, this uh, H2 element. I'll spin that round and round. It's pretty bugged out, right? I'll make them both spin together. Okay, so that's what you'll be learning how to do. Okay, let me just check. <coughs> check. Okay, let me just remove these things that you guys don't need. That was, I just wrote in there for the demonstration. And we don't need to animate this text around again. That status text, we'll remove that animation. So you can see in the body of my HTML5 web document, that I have an image element, I have a scripting element, and I also have an H2 element. This H2 element is simply to show you the degrees as they run, which you can remove that. That's only going to be for developer purposes. Now this script element has a function called rotate animation, and it has two arguments that it's passing. The first argument is the element on the page that you want to rotate round and round. In this case, I want to rotate ID of image 1. And then the second argument is going to be the speed at which we want the animation to run. So if you want this to go faster, you put a lower number. The lower the number, the faster your animation will run. And then you can see all we have left is the image tag, which has an ID of image 1. Now I'll quickly explain the JavaScript where all the magic happens. Okay, so the first thing we do in the JavaScript is we set up a variable for the looper, which is going to be our setTimeout method, and I just put it outside of the function. That way, if you guys want to clear timeout on that looper setTimeout, you can stop the animation from running anytime you want. You just use clear timeout on this looper variable. Then we establish the degrees, which we're going to start at zero degrees. Now here's function rotate animation, and this function gets called when this line in the script executes. So the animation doesn't actually start running until this JavaScript line runs. And you want to have that right under the element that you want to spin. And actually I should name this LM instead of COG1 because you might be passing any element through there. So let me just change these COG1 to LM and then it'll be more sensibly dynamic. And let's make sure it still runs. Okie dokie. You can see I have it running in uh, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera, and then if none of those browsers are found to be used by this user who's viewing the page, then this uh, default CSS3 transform property is going to be put into place. But for now, we have to use all of the prefixes, the WebKit prefix, the Mose prefix, the MS prefix, and the O prefix. In the future, maybe in about a year's time, this script will be, it'll look just like this. Let's see. I can remove that, remove that, put that right there, put this right there, and that script will run perfectly just like this in the future. But you know how we have to work with different browsers, all these crazy quirks. And even if you're using CSS, pure CSS animation, you'll still have to put in the reference for all of these prefixes for all the different browsers. Just because not all of the browsers are up to speed with using the standard default transform property which this line executes that. So the first thing we do is we put this L 
variable, which is the element that we want to spin round and round, we put that into a variable called lm after we run document.getElementById on it. And this rotate animation function, it's running very fast, many times per second, because we have this set timeout looper in there set at the specific speed that we want it to run. So once you have an object for that element, we run the if conditions that are only in place for now until the web catches up to standard CSS3. But these if conditions are set up to say if the user's browser matches Chrome, then we use the WebKit transform property. Else, if the user's browser matches Firefox, then we're going to use the Mose transform. Else, if the user's browser equals Internet Explorer, MS Transform, and if the user browser equals Opera, O Transform. Else, if it's not any of those, Standard Transform. Then, once you have rotated that object just a little bit, you're going to run the set timeout looper on it. And what that's going to do is keep running this rotation animation over and over and over again, and your degrees are going to change by running degrees plus plus. Basically, it just adds one to the degrees every time that the function runs. It'll keep compounding that number. And finally, down in the bottom, we just say if the degrees are greater than 359, which means when it reaches 360 degrees, you're going to make degrees 1. That way, that number starts over. And this uh, document.getElementById status.innerHTML is for showing the rotation degrees as they run. Basically, this little text right here. And you can remove that or comment it out because you don't need it. And it's important for you guys to keep in mind, remember, in the future, this is going to look just like this. You won't have to have all those stupid if conditions in there for all the stupid prefixes for all the stupid different browsers in the stupid world. Okay, so it'll be a lot slimmer. That's why it's just a few lines of code. And it's nice to play with JavaScript in this way to really understand how you can animate all of the CSS properties any way you want using some fun JavaScript. Let's take a look at the finished product one more time. And there you go. And if I wanted that to go really, really fast, I can just set the speed down here to 2. And it'll fly. See? If I wanted to go slow, I just put that on something like 150. You can make it go really, really slow, make it just creep along. But I think for a fluid looking movement, somewhere around 30 should be good. That gives you a nice smooth effect. And it might not even look so smooth on my video because of my rendering. But if you run this in your browser, you'll see how smoothly that's animating in a circle. Oh, I want to quickly add one more little tip. If you want this to go counterclockwise instead of clockwise, basically the opposite direction, you just minus minus and you change this to less than, put a minus on this 359 and a minus on this 1. So the degrees are now decrementing instead of incrementing. And you want to check to see if degrees are less than negative 359. If they are, you want to go back to negative 1 for the degrees. Let's run that. Let's see if when it gets back to 360 what happens. When it gets to negative 360, it should reset back to negative 1. Yep, we're good to go. So that's how you can make it reverse. And you can add dynamics to this function if you want to have the argument. Basically, you can set this argument here for clockwise or CCW, counterclockwise. And then you can adjust your function to make that kind of magic happen. Okay, so just think creative. Okay, let's test this one more time. Make sure we're still running. Okay, and I'll put these back to the way they were. Make sure we get it going the right way again. Okay. And this is the code I'll give you guys.